Hello, Grade 11. You would remember that before we went on break, we were talking about African slavery. We would have already spoken about the triangular slave trade, which was this trade between Europe, Africa, and the New World. We would have spoken about the Middle Passage and the horrors thereof. Things such as uh, no food, cramped conditions, unsanitary conditions. We would have also spoken about the two types of slave selling, auction and scramble. And we would have talked about slave resistance. And we talked about plantation life already and why slaves would have resisted. And so today we move on to another aspect of African slavery. So today we move on to slave codes and laws. I want you to ask yourself the question, do you think it was easy to maintain slave behavior? Also, why might slave codes and laws been enacted? Why might they have been enacted? So that's going to be our, those are going to be our guiding questions for this presentation. So what do we intend to do today? Our lesson objectives. Firstly, we're going to identify the forms of punishment used by plantation owners to control their enslaved laborers. We are going to be explaining why slave laws were enacted. Remember, we already asked that question, so we're going to try and find the answers. And then we're going to be comparing the slave codes of the Spanish, the French, and the English territories. So you know that slavery did not just exist in one country or one territory, but it existed for European territories throughout the continent. So Spanish territories, French territories, and English territories. We're going to be comparing their slave codes. So first and foremost, we're talking about slave punishment. We're going to be identifying the different forms of slave punishment. But do you already know? If you can, before I've been shown on the slide, what do you already know are some of the forms of punishment that slaves might have endured? Give yourself a second and think about it. You can pause the video and think about it some more and see what, what do you think I'm going to say. So, types of slave punishment. Slaves, pu slave punishments would have been different depending on which colony you were in. So, if you were in a, sl in a French territory, a Spanish territory or British territory, there's going to be some differences. Also, if you're in the Bahamas compared to if you're in Barbados or Jamaica, it's going to be some differences. All right. So it all depends on where you are. And these are some examples that uh, of slave punishments. First and foremost, whipping and beating, things that you should know. So slaves would have been whipped and beat if they did not follow the rules or if they tried to rebel in any kind of way. So you notice you'd notice in any movie about slavery there's always someone being whipped, all right? There was branding. This is where they put hot iron on the skin. And the branding is, while it was for punishment as well, remember it was also, it could also be used to identify who the slave belonged to, who the enslaved person belonged to. You put the hot iron on the skin and it leaves a mark. It's kind of, that's the thing that they do with, do to cows. Then they would split up families. Splitting up families is also a punishment because if you cannot be with your family, there can be some, there can be various issues that develop within you personally. All right. So it's, it's punishing you. It's like, it's like keeping you, if you are imprisoned and you are unable to see your family. All right. Then they would withhold food and necessities. Come on now. How would you feel if someone told you you could not eat? All right. So you can see why that would be a punishment. Imprisonment. Again. Being taken away from those whom you love for obvious reason for what you did that might have been against the slave laws that might have been against what the rules of the plantation were. Mutilation and killing of the enslaved. Mutilation is where they would kind of destroy parts of your body and sometimes they would kill you. All right. So these are the types of slave punishments. So with all that being said, we're also we're obviously going to want to know why there were slave laws that were enacted. Why were there slave laws that came into place? All right. So why you're asking questions, reasons for slave laws. So we, the first reason was to control the movement and behavior of enslaved people. Remember, enslaved people were nothing but property to the slave to the slave owners. All right. So they were nothing but property, nothing more. They were worth nothing more than a simple chair or a piece of land. All right. So they want to control their movement and the behavior. They wanted to regulate the treatment of the enslaved, which was the which 
was property. So, yes, they identified the slaves, the enslaved people as property, but they also wanted to make sure that they were being treated correctly. Now, why do you think they want them to be treated correctly? Because it would have kept them from revolting. It would also would have made them want to work harder in some cases. All right? It also kept them from being damaged and unable to work. So they wanted to regulate the treatment. So it was never really always about the enslaved. It was about protecting the property. It was also to protect the slave owners from revolts and other forms of violence. Okay, so the laws kept slaves, kept the enslaved people in line to keep them from revolting and being violent. And it was also to keep the economic, the social, and the political power in the hands of the planters and away from colored and enslaved people. So blacks and enslaved were not to have any kind of economic, social, or political power. They were not to have money. They were not to have social status. They were not to hold any position in government at the time. So we've talked about why the slave laws were enacted. So now let's look at the different slave laws throughout the, throughout the colonies. So you had the French territories, you had the Spanish territories, and you had the English territories. All right. So let's look at the Spanish first. So the Spanish slave laws were something known as las siete partidas. All right, las siete partidas. Las siete partidas is simply means the seven regulation. All right. So you look you look at siete. Siete in Spanish means seven. And these were, this is just the name of the slave laws. Firstly, the enslaved had to be brought up in the Roman Catholic faith, right? So there was some religion aspect to it. They had, they had to be, they should not be mistreated by their masters. So again, remember why they, why they enacted the slave laws because they wanted to treat, they wanted to protect the enslaved people. The enslaved could bring their complaints before the court, so if a slave master was to be mistreating them, they can actually go before the court and, and present evidence as to what has happened. The enslaved who could afford their freedom should be set free, meaning that if you have enough money, if you saved enough, not necessarily money, but save enough rations like land or things of that nature, or some monetary gain, some money, you could be able to buy your freedom and you would be able to be set free under las siete partidas. The enslaved were not to work on Sundays and holidays. This is kind of something that's still enacted today, not in the sense of slavery, but work, most workplaces you're off on Sundays and holidays, much like government agencies. The priests had the same mass for the enslaved. Again, that's a Roman Catholic thing. Mass is, is the Roman Catholic worship service. And the master had to provide clothing and food for the enslaved in their old age. So even if a slave was to quote unquote retire, the master still had to provide food and clothing for that enslaved person. So really there were two Spanish slave laws. Uh, they're kind of the same thing, just an update. This, the update to Las Siete Partidas is known as La Cedula. Which, is, which means the code. So the Spanish laws were updated in 1680 and the update known as the La Cedula means the code. In addition to what was already settled in Las Siete Partidas, these were some of the added laws. So first there was a limit placed on the number of enslaved that could meet together, meaning you cannot meet in large numbers. And they could not carry weapons or move about freely. All right, you could not carry weapons or move about freely. Also, if you were under the age of 17, you were not required to work. So we talked about the Spanish code, which was La Siete Partidas or La Cedula. And now we talk about the French code. So the Spanish code would have referred to, would have referred to countries that had, that were Spanish origin. Countries like Trinidad and Tobago at the time. All right. Now we have the French code. The French code would obviously apply to, to French colonies. Those like Martinique and Saint-Domingue, which is now Haiti. So the French slave codes were, or slave laws were known as Code Noir, and it was passed in 1685. It stated 
that all slaves were to be baptized. Again, some religious aspect to it. Slaves were not to work on Sundays and holidays. So you see some similarities between this and the Spanish slave laws. Slave marriages were to be encouraged. Food and clothing were to be provided by the slave owner. Slaves could not own property. Enslaved were to be killed if they hit their master or their mistress or any free person for that matter. And enslaved should be treated humanely, meaning with respect, they should not be beat. And owners could free slaves after 20 years of service. So once you would have worked for 20 years, you are free to go. You can be free to go. So we talk about the Spanish laws, Las Siete Partidas, the French laws, Code Noir, and now we talk about the English laws. These are going to apply to countries like the Bahamas, Jamaica, Barbados. All right. So these were another set of laws set up by the British government to control the enslaved. And it stated that the enslaved had to carry a pass if they left the plantation. So if it was that they wanted to leave the plantation for any reason, they had to have a pass that was granted from their slave owner, from their master. And if you were caught without that pass, you could be beat and you would be carried back to your plantation. There was to be no gathering in large numbers between sunset and sunrise. Again, you can probably think of why they didn't want to, why they didn't want the enslaved to be gathering in large numbers. And that was because they thought it would, it was encouraging them too much for revolts. Then there was to be no blowing of the conch shell nor beating of the drums after sunset. And again, this is because the masters believed that those were ways to send signals for rebellion. So they were afraid for their lives. The enslaved could not give evidence against the white person. So this is contrary to what was in Code Noir, where the slaves could give evidence. But in the English territories, the slave could not give evidence against the white person. The enslaved could not be taught to read or write. All right, so they wanted to keep them illiterate. Number six, they were forbidden from being married. So as opposed to in Code Noir where slave marriages were encouraged in the English territories, slaves could not marry. These laws also stated how planters were to treat the enslaved. So for, number, for one, planters should set aside provision grounds. These provision grounds is where the, the enslaved people could grow their own food, and do it and grow food for them to eat as well as for them to sell. All right. They were planters also to take care of the old enslaved people. So just like in the Spanish in Las Siete Partidas, the planters had to take care of the enslaved people even after they quote unquote retired. Okay. And then the planters could not use cruel punishment or killing. And in fact, in, Bar in Barbados, if you were convicted of cruel punishment or killing an enslaved person, a fine was attached. So you had to pay some money as a result. All right. So that concludes our lesson on the slave laws and the slave laws. We, uh, you will note that we've identi identified the types of slave punishments. We've identified the reasons why or we've, we've explained why the slave laws have been enacted and we've compared the three types of laws. I want you to think for a while, do you think that the slave laws were humane? Were they done in the interest of the enslaved person or were they done in the interest of the planters? You can think about that. Your assignment will be posted on Google Classroom as well.